Up. She's expected to make gender politics her central pitch to voters when she officially does this and is now one of three Democratic women who have announced their run for president with more expected to follow. Power panel slides in now. Harold Ford Jr., former Democratic congressman from Tennessee, welcome. Thank you. Nan Hayworth, a former Republican congresswoman from New York, welcome. Thank you, Harris. Uh, great to have former lawmakers <laughs> uh, on the deck today. And Let's friends. start off and with and the friends. gender card and most recently your political party with a great deal of experience with this. Well, I tell you, Kirsten Gillenbrand presents a compelling picture. The question is whether or not she or any of these candidates are going to be able to put together two things. One, a compelling, inclusive economic message that is positive. And two, whether he or she is able to demonstrate that they can manage a complex government, as we were talking, talking off screen. Uh, it will be a wild race. The market will be open. And I suspect we'll probably hear from maybe five to ten others in the coming weeks that they're in a, in a, in a I, race I don't mention. Well. I don't hear you mention anything about the female component, so I'll ask you about it, Nan. Uh, what do you make of, of a woman saying that gender and as a mom are some of the reasons why people should vote for her? Uh, you know, it, Kirsten Gillibrand's definition of women's issues is too narrow, Harris, and that's my problem with her. Uh, as a member of the Independent Women's Forum, we like to say that every issue is a woman's issue. Kirsten Gillibrand's positions on taxation, on spending, on national security. She's an abolish ICE person. Uh, those are not in the best interests of America's women. Uh, most small businesses in America are actually owned by women, or certainly the majority of them. We need relief and we need someone who, as Harold said, can, can actually manage an economy, create jobs, lift burdens uh, on taxpayers and on workers. And I don't think she's capable of that. Well, and your candidates will also need something else. They'll need to be able to take on a president who has brought more jobs in certain sectors yes. of this economy than we've seen in 50 plus years. So so who do you like? Uh, look, I'd stick with the, the definition I've laid out. I think there are a number, number of people out there talking about it now who are smart and able to do this. This is no disrespect to Senator Gillenbrand, but I think you've got to look at a Kamala Harris. You've got to look at a Mike Bloomberg if he's serious. He you like him Biden. on one ticket? Look, I, they would, that would, that would, look I'm, not, I'm not here to pick our ticket. We'll let, let voters in Iowa, New Hampshire, and these other places make those decisions. But I think you've got to look at, in Cory Booker, there are a number of these people out there who I think are formidable, but they're going to have to go through, to Nance point, find a way to appeal to voters, find a way to appeal to all voters. This is not going to be an identity politics game alone. Mm -hmm. The interests, politics, and identities, identities of voters are not neatly tied to parties like they were 10 and 20 years ago. You're going to have to appeal to voters who may be Democrat on trade, may be more Republican on one thing. Look at Donald Trump. He is an amalgamation mm -hmm. of a number of different positions when it comes to economic issues. Ford and Ann, I'll bring you back on a day. We had Absolutely. a little bit of breaking news earlier, so thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm, Absolutely. I'm sorry. Harris. I'll be right back. Liberty Mutual.